Uh, we'll be advised our temperature is minus five six. CFCW time, 18 minutes past 1 o'clock. I'd like to dedicate the next song to all the guys on Rig 20. I drilled a well when my back ached with pain. Drilled in the snow, the sleet and the rain. Drove many fine cars, but not for my own. Paid lots of rent, but I ain't got a home. The money, it's good, and I wouldn't quit even if I could. And now we're up to 18, 9, 19 minutes a foot. Uh, this means maybe our bit is uh, dulled right off, and we're gonna have to come out of the hole. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Drop your pill. Let's come on out then. It makes for a long day. Racking pipe is the easiest part of it. By the time you start heading back down the hole, you're pretty well relaxed. I mean, you haven't worked that hard. And if you have a tough day like I had yesterday, well then, you, no matter what you do, you just can't seem to do anything right. Everything is just concentrating and all three men work together. Because if one guy misses a beat somewhere, it's just like a machine, it just doesn't work. So what you're concentrating on basically is what you're doing right at the moment you're doing it because this involves the way it goes, you know, because uh, if I make a mistake somewhere along the line, it's so easy to have somebody hurt. I mean, it's, the rigs aren't all that dangerous, but it's the machinery you're working with. That's all it takes is one little slip and you're either maimed or, or could be seriously hurt. When I started on the rigs, it was basically just a job. And since I've been on the rigs, well, it means more to me than that. You know, it's not an easy career to take up. Because when you, you know, you, sure you are, we work around, uh, let's say, motors or, you know, small motors or something like this. You work on your own car right motor. But when you come up here, that these just are monsters. Everything is huge. It's greasy and oily, but yet again, you know, it all comes off in the wash. They supply the wash, you know. Okay. How's it going? <laughs> One more day over. Same thing tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we're doing it tomorrow. Well, maybe we, get, we might skip through tomorrow. It's hard to say. I don't know. Oh, I'm going to go to the new pro. Jesus, that's 16 hours. Makes a short day anyway. Yeah. The morale is okay. We get along with everybody because we, it's a matter of not, not wanting to, but it's a matter of having to, really. If you don't get along with your fellow men, 
somebody's got to go because you just can't have that kind of restriction up here. If, if somebody starts fighting, well, it just doesn't, you know, it's not worth the time and a problem. So somebody's got to go. Like hell, they pay more supplies up here. My fingers. Good bright size anyway. Hey. You're allowed to take your shirts off, aren't you? <laughs> There's tricks that we play when we have a slack moment out the rig, you know. <laughs> the favorite one then, that's been going around for quite some time is uh, you add a material that they put in the mud, it's called Calzan. And what it does when you mix it with water or, you know, anything like that, it, uh, well, how can I describe it? Well, it looks like stuff that comes out of your nose, you know. And the more you wash, the thicker it gets. So if your guy puts his uh, clothes in the wash machine and you throw in a couple of handfuls of that, the more the mixer rotates up your clothes, the thicker that stuff gets. And the only way you get that stuff out of the clothes is to wash some diesel fuel. And then you get the uh, stuff come out of your nose, all off your clothes, but then your, your clothes smell of diesel fuel. <laughs> this basically is to get even at a guy who has been pulling his share of the load sort of thing. What's that? <laughs> well, uh, How much to say to today? <laughs> Is there any uh, mojo or anything here? No. How about common? Here's the brush. <laughs> need a... Who's got all the face cards? There you go. It's the best part of the day. You're not only dirty, you got a you got run a Filthy. coon to shame. Hey? Where's Rennie? Come on. He's been here performing. It's an advantage for a buried man who, you know, all comes up here because uh, you got uh, two weeks, you know, work up twelve hours, and then you get a week off. Whereas you work on a rig down south and you get twenty one days and two days off. It's all right if you're close enough to the city where you live, but if you don't, then you get to see your wife and kids about uh, an hour and a half uh, regularly on about in 21 days. So this way here, you got a whole week to yourself. You can do anything you want to. But I've got to finish washing here too before I want to watch the movie tonight. It's a toss up between a, a duster and a horror, I think. A man works 12 hours and you get two movies a week. That's what we've been generally getting. So you watch, let's say, you come in on a Thursday, you watch one Thursday night and Friday night, then what do you do the next Thursday? Uh, you see, you know, let's say you're up here for two weeks. If a guy stays up any more than that, like usually you'd like to stay over five weeks to keep back on your regular crew. And the hardest part, I think, is being up here, you're sort of isolated and you see the crews come and the crews go, and then they sort of wonder after about four weeks when your turn is to get out. This is the toughest part. You know, you see the same faces, and it's kind of nice to get back. You know, there's a plane going, but you just don't know when yours is. This is, uh, I don't know, that, and I guess boredom mostly. Although there's not much time to get bored if you work a 12-hour shift. I am the head cook in this uh, drilling camp. Uh, my wife and I decided to change to the camps which are the same remuneration and much easier to work than uh, working in a hotel or a big restaurant or a club or in your own business. We both make enough money in one season to uh, rest another four or five months a year. I'm uh, responsible for the good food, for the, the satisfaction of the boys, 
during 24 hours of the day. Hey, what's hiding under this bread in here? What's that? What's this hiding under the bread in here? After 12 to 14 hours steady work every day, I go to our quarters and relax. In case of other crews coming in from other rigs, maybe they had to land here or what, you know. We can meet practically any emergency as far as food is concerned. In a remote camp like this, people consider eating and their the service, the food service, more or less as an entertainment. Oh, we slept half the afternoon. There's some, there's some gravy. Oh, I mean, that's fine. All fat I need. <laughs> Don't tell me you're on diet. Yeah. There is no life, there's work and sleep. Why do you come up with us, personally? Well, this is where my job is. Working conditions are best in the oil patch at, in this location for us. Um, the excitement of drilling in a new area, this is more still a wildcat area to us. Uh, the unknown problems that we're going to run into drilling, this is the excitement of working up here. The main thing is as long as a person can keep personnel working together without arguing, and keep good camps, good rigs, clean, good equipment, and lots of supplies. That's the main item. You can keep on working for a long time, no problems. Uh, if there are people in here any length of time, they can become what we call bushed. People just kind of going half haywire and getting bored with the whole situation. And just being penned up in one of these camps and no place to go. Well, I mean, people, they just, it's human nature, they just do these weird things that you know, and just don't correlate to natural behavior. Like, I mean, a person can wake up screaming in the night or he can be afraid of some person. We had a funny incident this winter. Uh, one of our representatives, Doug Lewis, was in here. And uh, this one man we had, uh, we figured he was from the mafia. He was running around stark fear of this Doug Lewis for days and we finally had to just ship him out. <laughs> That's an example of what can happen up here. Since BC opened up, uh, there's a lot more rigs running. There's a lot of rigs down across the line. Lots of men gone for them that have been in the patch for years. So you're training a lot of new help, and you can't just turn around and shove any green guy up here because it, green men they just don't work too good up here. If a person keeps busy up here at all, you will not, the isolation will not bother you at all. And this was why we, in another case, we go to 12-hour shifts. The men are busy, they're tired when they're finished. The first thing when we do a raw shift, you get cleaned up, and then from that, you've either eaten or you have cards to play after that, or movies to watch. Although we are lacking in movies, we'd like to have more entertainment for the men. And uh, basically, by that time, you've got 12, 16 hours spent, and you're ready to go to bed up here. So, I'm starting to get mixed up. So, uh, uh oh, oh, well, that fits. That one won't fit. How long have you been drilling, Lauren? Twenty years. What's kept you going that long? <laughs> Money. <laughs> Money. Paycheck. Think it's worth it? Well, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. You got any family, Lauren? Yeah. Two boys and one girl. You see much of them? Two of them's working on the rig. I see them. <laughs> and I see the girl. The girl's married in Edmonton, and I see them about once a week. 
when I'm home. It's the best I've had it since I started on the rigs. Because I at least get the week home, which before I didn't. We had to uh, work so many, many weeks to get any time off. Six. Enjoy camp life? 30. Yeah, in a way. Did you gin? In a way, I do. Oh. No? I threw you that 30. six. I threw you that six. Yeah. Well, we got... My partner caught your partner with 30. What? <laughs> Gee, he's getting heavy. Most of your personnel are up here are all pretty well easy to get along with. It. A lot of them in common with everybody else, you know. So. Well, you're you're living with me uh, two weeks at a time, so pretty well got to get along. And you're working with them also, so. Uh, well, if you don't hang on to that pipe, you can make it fairly rough. They go for a pretty fair ride at the bottom there. Uh, everybody's afraid of heights. <laughs> you just, you got your safety belt, so I mean, there's not really too much to worry about, eh? You always got one hand for yourself, you know. Just one for the company and one for yourself, and you can get along pretty good. The uh, reason the well is drilled is to penetrate down into the Earth's crust to various layers of rock which may or may not contain oil and or gas. I think the uh, proportion is about one in ten that finds, uh, finds a sizable quantities of oil or gas. We're dealing with uh, minimum lengths of pipe of 30 feet, and when we run a trip, you notice that they pull up three of these at a time and stack them in the derrick. This is to speed up that operation when it comes time to change bits. The chips that are produced from the bit action on the rock have to be disposed of somewhere, and this is where the drilling fluid comes in. Now, it's commonly called mud, but it's actually a highly specialized fluid, and uh, one of its primary uh, jobs is to circulate down through the center of the drill string which is hollow, out through jets in the bit and come back up to the surface in what we call the annulus. And with it, it brings the chips that have been broken off from the rock. And these are screened out at the shale shaker. Now these chips are collected at intervals to give a representative sample for say every 10 feet of rock drill. And the geologist examines them under the microscope and, and tests them for uh, signs of oil and gas and uh, what he can expect farther ahead. Now, trying to guess ahead of the bit in a wildcat hole like this is uh, real crystal ball work. You just can't do it. I really look at some of these fellows that are working on the dairy floor, the, uh, fellow that works up on the monkey board, 90 feet above the ground, some of these other chaps, and I am glad I don't have to do the work that they're doing, because I could never do it. I admire these fellows. Uh, they come up quite green, some of them, and they start working on the derrick floor, spinning a chain or working a tong, and uh, the first thing you know, they're accomplished uh, roughnecks. It takes teamwork. If one fellow is out of step too much, the driller has to catch it. If he doesn't catch it, there could be somebody that's hurt. And they may be hurt bad because you're moving a lot of really heavy machinery there. And the machine won't stop when you say, whoa. We just had a new one recently played on us by the Derrick man. He was mixing one one day and all the ingredients he had look like turd, eh? So I thought, well, by God, he come across with a bright idea that he'd roll up one of these turds and plant it in the boiler. 
So the motorman come along and he saw that. He thought, well, God, he said, somebody crapped my boiler. So we had him going for a while. What we were going to do was plant one about one every day, really getting him fired up. But as it turned out, he was pretty fired up the first time we did it. We were coming out of the hole, and our personnel manager just happened to come out with the rig. And I was breaking off a stand, and they ha hit her with a hammer, and it sounded like she was dry, and it wasn't. And I just popped her, and we just drowned one guy really good. He just looked like he'd come out of a mud bath. All you could see was eyeballs and teeth. Last winter, we had one guy, he wouldn't leave camp for four days because he couldn't see the rig. Some young fellas, they just like staying inside around the gullies and out of the wind and too scared to go out when it's 40, 50 below and 40 mile an hour wind and snow blow. I like it very much in the sense that you've, you've really got to get out and you've got to you know, take care of yourself up here. You, you gotta be careful. So you're like a, a pioneer, really, in this type of environment. So there is a kind of stark, isolated beauty to it all. As The hardest part, I think, is being up here, you're sort of isolated and you see the crews come and the crews go and then you sort of wonder after about four weeks when your turn is to get out. The only thing I got on my mind is when it's getting closer and closer to going home time, it's just to keep myself alive long enough to get on that plane to get out of here.